Welcome to Take One Talk, a podcast with suggestions and topics made up on the spot, and Take One has to deal with the chaos. Make sure to send in your comments and questions to our social media at Take One Improv so we can talk about it on our show. Now, get ready to take off your pants and piss yourself. And welcome to episode 10 of Take One Talk. I am joined, my name is Christian Harris. I'm joined today by... Danielle Phillips. Aaron Kelly Noble. And... I'm on the computer. I'm running the tech. I'm the guy in the chair. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm the guy in the chair. And his name's Corey Phillips. <laughs> Uh, to, yeah, for those who are listening, Corey is sitting a full room away from us because he's... No, they can see you in my shot behind yeah. you. Yeah. It's an optical illusion. We're very far. Uh, they can see us in his chair. Corey has been a bad boy, so we put him in the corner and also made him control the stream. Yeah. No, it's just because all everybody in Take One are giants except for one person. Yeah. One person's not a giant. I wonder who that is. I know, I know. I haven't quite figured it out. I, mean, I, I, I just know that, that someone among us is secretly tiny. <laughs> who? One of us, our feet are not touching the floor. <laughs> Only one. Only one. I have no idea who it is. No clue. No I've never clue. touched the floor. Absolutely no clue. So who are we and why are we here? Uh, so we are the improv comedy group Take One. Take One, we do improvisational comedy shows all over the United States. We're hilarious. And this podcast, Take One Talk, is all about our adventures and our friendship and everything you didn't know you needed to know about us as individuals and as a group and as love uh, vessels, vessels of love. So how is everybody? Great! <laughs> wow! The response time, they were definitely 100% listening to you. They weren't completely and utterly checked out. If I they were, was, I just didn't know how I wanted to answer. I know. I was like, how, how, how are you, Christian? Christian's doing great. He answers like a normal human being. <laughs> Christian's doing great. I'm doing fine. Um, I realize that the best place for my my dude is right above Danny's head. Are you moving yourself? Yeah, because she's the shortest. So it's I do love the it. The best place for me to be is like... Why are you looming over me? I, I am your lord. Tiny. You're looming. I it's want his... all of us to have little squares and do like the Brady Bunch. That can be arranged. <laughs> <laughs> that can be arranged. Um, yeah. I'm doing pretty good. Sure. I just got Corey's gift spot for him. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking are. of which, that's a fun story. That's a fun story. I'm gonna go get uh, some. He's gonna some, go get some. Some. So. He's gonna go get some things. Yeah. His gifts, I assume. Well, we lost Corey, uh, but now I can see myself, which is unsettling. Oh, here he is. So uh, let me tell my viewers today, 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 today. Uh, I have recently got into a hobby of uh, of doing whips. And, and not, not the sexy kind, like the Jacques the Whipper kind where I'm doing tricks and stuff. Still which, sexy. Yeah, say, which is not sexy. Yeah, yeah Jacques, Jacques, Jacques is sexy. Not I, sexy. I, I, me doing whips is not. Um, <laughs> but, so I got really into it. But I realized, uh, so my, uh, my, my wonderful uh, father-in-law bought me a whip, but it's, uh, it's nine feet long. Oh, it was super hard to do tricks with. So I was like, I found out, figured out through watching videos, it's like, oh, I need a shorter whip. I need like a... A five foot and a six foot. So the guy who made my original whip came over today, brought a bunch of whips. And I went in, it was like, well, he didn't really want to make the whip that, he didn't really want to make a new one. So he's like, I hope you can find what you want with what I have. And I was like, oh. So I went in not thinking I was going to walk away with anything. And through situations, walked away with two. <gasps> I have two of them. I have two more. And I now have three whips. And uh, one, one has a bamboo he has handle. A, he's got one for each hand. I got one for each hand. All three of them. Yeah, um, all three. Yeah, all three of my hands. <laughs> so basically, at the next con, we're all going to be riding horses and whipping people. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to be Honestly, whipping Honestly, we could have that arranged. So we're going to be in Oklahoma, which is very, <laughs> like, 
<laughs> my parents have horses. Mm -hmm. We could literally go. We're not yeah. going to because we're going to be doing a job. Yeah, we're going we to be. be. We're going to be doing improv That's shows on the true. on horseback. On Horse prom. Mounted improv. Mounted improv. Walking Lots. through the embassy suites of Norman, Oklahoma. Lots of poo. So much. And the horses will also be pooping. Yes. So it's just going to be twice as much as normal. Yeah. But yeah, that's a great segue, Aaron. In two weeks on New Year's, we're going to be in Norman, Oklahoma at OkiCon doing con stuff, New Year's stuff. It's going to be a wild time. We do it every year, and every year it's a blast. OkiCon is... I don't know, it's one of my favorite conventions of the whole year. Really? It, just, it feels like the con goers are out to enjoy themselves for mm -hmm. the year and also yep. for the new year. I don't know, it's like a double thing of like, we're going to have fun because it's the end of the year and also we're going to have fun because it's the beginning of the new year. Yeah. And it, I don't know, the vibe of that con is really, really good. Yeah. Also, That's they're awesome. Oklahomans, which as an Oklahoma girl who lives in, well, whose family now lives well, whose family lives, and I no longer live, but family is in Norman. We're very nice people, very enjoyable. Thank you for that report, Aaron. Uh, back to the studio. No. So what's really fun blink about- Blink twice if Oklahoma is holding you hostage. <laughs> I know. Oh, so many blinks. No, but like OkiCon was actually my first ever con with you guys. Was? Oh. Yeah. Last year? It, no, the year before. Okay. The, I was like, oh. I wasn't thinking it was last no, year. No, last The summer year. one? The one in June. No, Okiecon. Okiecon's at the same time every year. It's the never New moved. Yeah. New, New Year's. Year's. Then New Year's. what was the Oklahoma con at the Embassy Suites? Sooner. Sooner con. Sooner con, yeah. Also yeah. a great convention. Yeah, I did that one. Completely different vibe because it's sci-fi. Yes. So it's just a very a different group of people. Yeah. Also great. Actually, what's really cool about Sooner con is they have a lot of sci-fi artists. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, not artists. They do have artists, but I mean authors. Mm -hmm. And I love sci-fi reading it. And so I went around and I talked to all of the authors. It was really, really fun. But yeah, no, OkiCon, Oki uh, it's funny. So like my very first con was that one. And I went as an understudy. And it was so cool to watch all of you like perform and get up on the stage. And I have that itch. I'm like, I want to play too. I want to play. Uh, but I was good. I got to play a little. That's why bit. I can't watch shows is because that that's basically torture to me. I know. It's mm -hmm. basically torture. It really is. But I got to play a little bit. And so I have on this banner me being held up. Who at are... gunpoint? Oh. Yes, being held at gunpoint. <laughs> no, there's a big picture on our on our take one banner of me being held up, and that's actually my very first uh, convention show. Oh wow! Was it OkiCon? Because we're playing um, weekend weekend at Bernie's, yeah. and a little line of my tummy showing. It's very sexy, oh, but not ooh. too sexy. Crop yeah. top. Yeah. What is that? What is that? PG thirteen? Where are we at? PG thirteen? Or what? is it more than that? It was no, 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 no. It's like PG from the early two thousands <laughs> when midriffs were just like a okay. part of your outfit. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Not too much. Mm -hmm. But I have a muffin top, so it's it's a real niche market. Dude, right? I love me some muffins. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to buddy your muffin biscuit. Your muffin biscuit? Your it's either muffin. a muffin or it's biscuit. About to buddy your Can't biscuit. Do you what? do you remember when they made legit like only muffin tops? They made baked goods like yeah. little Debbie. Hundred percent. Just muffin tops. Yeah. Just tops. Just the tops. Yeah. Just the top. I need to look. No, I don't know. Yeah, no, I. Those were amazing. I can. Can I get that now? I don't know. I really like the top of the muffin. Like I know. Little, like slice off the top and that's it. Yes. yes. Who wants the, the crappy bottom where it's like it, with the little? I don't know what you call it. The little seal. Yeah. From the little cup. Yeah. The None cup. Of that. I don't know. It's like I remember when um, donut holes were like this new thing, and I was like, oh my god, dude, yeah, because they're wasting all that <laughs> dough from the middle. Cause that's how donuts are made. Uh, they're so tasty. So, I, <laughs> I'm i actually curious. I don't think I've ever heard... Corey, what are you doing? <laughs> for the audio listeners... What are you... <laughs> for the audio listeners, Corey has placed his stream feed over Danny's face. It's very funny. Yeah. <laughs> it's great for this audio medium as well. Yes. So if you... <laughs> Y'all are doing very, very good. good. Good comedy. Good comedy. Good physical video comedy. This is this is some some pandy pandy level comedy. Pandy. P 
pan, pan, pantomime? Pandemo, pandem, pandemic? She's having a stroke, guys. <laughs> wow. Thank you, Aaron. Actually, it's a seizure. I am an epileptic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so she can make those jokes. The sexiest Devil. epileptic. Devil. Uh, <laughs> no, but I'm genuinely, I don't think I've ever heard about your first con experience, Danny. My first con? Yeah. That was GlitchCon. Glitch? I'm pretty sure Glitch was my first con. When was that? Uh, 2019? 2018? Uh, no, I think it was 28. When did we start dating, Corey? <laughs> 2018. Okay, I think it was in 2018. Okay. So, Corey and I started dating before, af after I joined Take One, but before my first con kind okay. of thing. And I'm pretty sure GlitchCon was so the first one. So, it got her one. into her first con. <laughs> Nepotism. Slitter right in. Nepotism. <laughs> um, GlitchCon, which was, uh, it was really fun. It was all the way in Arkansas. And I just remember being there and thinking, wow, they're all so good. I can't believe I have to imp improvise with them. Mm -hmm. I think it was... Um, have to? <laughs> Weird phrasing. Well, like, well, I can't believe I have to, to improvise. And like, be on stage I with them, it. and I feel like no, I'm not going to. No, be don't let her slide. We never, no. let, we never let Danny slide. No, I, normally no. That's Except against, I, I totally That's against understand. the rules. Okay, it's against the rules. F you, Danny. Okay, uh, all the time. <laughs> Who was it? Was it? It was Corey, Roger, John. I think Josh Gordon was there. Okay. And I think me. Maybe Palace was there. Okay. Um, and it just, I don't know. There was just some amazing improvisers there. And I was like, oh, God, I have to improv with them. And then uh, Corey and I roasted each other on stage during a nice. impromptu stand-up. <laughs> nice. I never do stand-up either. Nice. We were we were really bad at each other at the time. <laughs> and... A lover's quarrel so early? <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah. Uh, but it was fun. Yeah. It was a good time. It was interesting going to that con and then after that going to some other cons because it GlitchCon that year was really packed. Oh really? It was it was kind of like I don't know the heyday of it, of it felt like of that con. Yeah. Like everyone was there. It was a lot of cosplayers. Yeah. It felt like a really like bustling place to be. And then I went to another con. I can't remember. I was like, wow, this is really boring compared to that. <laughs> That's what happened my very first year. I went to Akon as a tech with you guys. And then the very next weekend or two weekends after that, we went to Lubbock. Yeah. And it's a very different con. Yeah, yeah. it's, I don't know, uh, five to ten, six times smaller. Yeah. Um, you went from 20 to 30,000 to maybe yeah, a thousand. Yeah, we were performing for hundreds of people. That is 30 times smaller. Yeah, it is so tiny. Yeah. That's so All right, Aaron, your first con experience. My first con was this past year at Kowai Con. Is mm -hmm. that how you pronounce Kauai? it? Kowai? Yeah. Kowai. Not Kowai. Kowai. Um, which was a horror con. I've pronounced it wrong ever since. I was not supposed to go to that con. So instead of take one, per se, performing at that con, it was the funny femme fatales, or mm -hmm. F words. Which is still take one. It's yeah, still Take it's One, but it's the ladies of Take One who put which on... Which is Take One. Which is, <laughs> yeah, which is Take By One. By percentage, that's mostly Take One yeah. still. But I, yeah. I do all not know why we argue the semantics when literally 80% it's just, it's of just what Take that One format is, called, is F like, words. It's funny from Fidel. But also F words makes up 80% Take Ones, which means by majority it is Take One. Yes. So they're both... The same, yeah, yeah. Yes. I love when we do our double feature night where it's just like, okay, now for uh, our next my show. favorite mishap is Danny presenting it like it's another team entirely, oh, and, it was, yeah. and so she's like, and next up, us again, <laughs> and then every single person came out. And it was the same exact people from the first show. And yeah. it was like, Danny, you got to not present it like it's a different fucking thing. Yeah. It's just the second half of the show. Yeah. It's so funny. <laughs> but any hoozles, we do a true crime procedural, which is very, very good. I slept on the floor because I wasn't supposed to be there. Don't tell the embassy suites because... I was about to. <laughs> I don't think that's... That's not a it wasn't an NBC no. Suites. And we I won't just, say what it was. We won't say what it was. I also don't think that's against the rules. I, I don't know. I had an air mattress on the floor. Um, 
but yeah, yeah it was amazing. Uh, it went very well. That was a re- that was a really fun show. Oh yeah, we got so we get a genre for our um, crime procedural, and it's we are usually we kind of get it from the audience and this time we always get it from the audience but sometimes we ask the audience and then sometimes we actually have slips of paper that already have it but this time i believe we asked the audience and they were they were like we want it to be at a summer camp or church camp it was church camp it was church camp specifically i love that we did a summer slasher at church camp and it was my first time playing the detective, which is like the character that leads everyone throughout the story. It is very difficult. And I decided on my first con, my first time being detective, I was like, yup. And I went in as a nun. You guys were, you were Midwestern nuns. Midwestern nuns. Yeah. Yes. Midwestern nuns. Midwestern Min? No. Midwestern. Mint Western cucks. <laughs> no, we were not the Minty no. cucks. <laughs> Canadian mints. Canadian bacon? Yep. Yeah, you were Canadian. Cuckleberry Finn. <laughs> All right, God. Yeah. So, it was a good show. I'm it so was happy. blasphemous, but delightful. Yeah, it was. Because I remember hearing about it, and I was so like, I had FOMO so hard. I wanted to like be there. Also, the vendors were really cool at that show because since it was a horror con, we got to see yeah. a lot more niche vendors there, which was really oh, fun. Oh yeah, yeah. Because yeah. sometimes when you go on the con circuit, you see the same vendors, and you see you see the same um, fellow guests, you see the same yeah. vendors, especially if you kind of share a similar circuit. Mm. So it was really cool to see people that I had never met before, both both as guests. We, we met some of the like coolest yeah. um, on-camera actors that were into a lot of horror yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, titles, and they were really, really nice. It was so nice to meet them. Yeah. I think Joelle, what was her? I don't, I don't, she was in the Twilight series. So, so cool. She was really, really sweet. She's, I believe, from L.A., and I was like, I've never met her on the circuit before, and yeah. she was really nice. That is really cool, because, I mean, like, the, the Kowai, um, and the company that owns Kowai and all the other con, like, so we do every single con for a company called Fandom Events. And yeah, like it's the same company, so you have you do see a lot of familiar faces. Of course. And so that one, yeah, I remember seeing that. Like, oh, I want to go and meet these people. But yeah, and the so we had we basically it was so hard to not go home with so many new items from that con at the vendors because I was like, oh, this and this and this and this. Oh, but I don't need all of this. But that's, I won't see them again for another year. That's where you all got those um, hatchet earrings, right? Yes, they yeah. are. They are butcher knife earrings that I bought for all the funny films. They were bloody, and everyone wears them, which makes my heart happy. Yeah. But I always forget to wear them, and I'm the one that bought them. <laughs> yeah, they're very neat. Yeah. Uh, Corey, what's your first con experience? Yeah, Corey, tell us about the Jurassic Age. <laughs> <laughs> At least I was tall enough to walk out of the primordial soup. <laughs> <laughs> you short cuck. <laughs> I know when he snaps back, it was a good one. Yeah. <laughs> it was just so fast. <laughs> it, was so funny. it was very good. Anyways, the first con I well, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you about the first con, con take one was at. Oh uh, yes, and it was please. in 2010, and it was. We sort of stumbled onto this magical soup, because our first show at a con at a, at a convention was 400 people in attendance for the show, oh. and it was I was like that's when I realized I was like we have something here, and it, it was awesome. It was Tokyo and Tulsa, I believe Tokyo and Tulsa mm-hmm. 2010, and uh, it was just me uh, and a couple of buddies that I'd, you know done improv with in in high school and. None of them are a part of the team anymore because I killed them. They're dead. Yeah, we did eat Weird them. confession, but... Yep, yeah. yeah, I, I have to... The only way I, you can become good at improv is it's Highlander rules. So you have to absorb them. Yeah. So... Yeah, that's that's the whole reason That's the whole reason I was able to make main cast this year. Is yeah, because the people who left last year... You absorbed year, Chris. I did. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I did. Absorbed you absorbed so many Chris' men. soul essence. Yeah. So many men you've absorbed. That's yeah. why there's, the, there can only be one. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, okay, now yeah. I know. I'm not quite powerful enough to take Eventually Corey on Eventually one yet, person so. will be take one. That's yeah. the one. It that's is the one. one. That's, take that's the one piece. It is the take one piece. That... <laughs> 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 4,000 episodes. 
episodes later, bitch. That's how long it'll take, yeah. Yep. So, I mean, like, you, how did, how did you know just because there was a lot of people there? that you Yeah, and they, it was like, you never feel more like a rock star yeah. in improv than whenever you're doing a con show. Mm-hmm. I mean, Aaron got to experience, I think, your first real one. Your first real take one show experience. I mean, let's be honest. Yes, I got my first real take one experience at the past con that we did. However, I wasn't serenaded like my first con. Listen, but having a room that is packed to the walls, screaming, reverberating Mm. the walls as they scream at you, that's an experience that is like none other that I've (laughs) snorted. It is very addicting. I will also say at this past con in San Antonio or San Marcos or whatever, uh, we had Comedy Coliseum and I lost. It is depressing. And Danny won, so... We should it was all... Danny's first Colony Coliseum win, right? Ever? It... No, I won last year. No, it's year. Kayla that's never won. Yeah. No, yeah. Kayla, Kayla did win. Kayla she did won win. Once. She finally, she finally broke her lose streak. It was because streak. I was captain. <laughs> <laughs> I no, see. but Corey, I won the year before. Too. Okay, okay, I couldn't remember. So we, we're I knew at... one take one member had never won before. Kayla, then... Kayla did sink her Could... first win. I've never won before yet, but I've only yeah. had three comedy. I think the very first time I ever won Comedy Coliseum is when I was a swing player. And Corey made... You were always going to win? Yeah, because Corey (laughs) made me represent the audience. So when they voted for me, they were voting for themselves to win. And they'll always vote for themselves. They will. They'll always vote for themselves. That's so fun. Okay, cool. So now, this part of the podcast, we're going to go into our individual segments. I'm sure Erin, totally, with the look she's giving me, has one ready. And if not, that's okay. Uh, So... What improv is all about? Let's start with Corey. What's your segment? So my segment is that, as this is the last uh, of the, uh, the last podcast of season one... Uh, next, uh, we will take a two-week break, and then we will continue seas- in January, season two of Take One Talk, the return of the talk, the talkening. Mm-hmm. Talk, talk, two talk. Talk mint day. Talk mint day. Take the, two talk? The talkening. Back, back talk. in the talk it. Take, talk. One, take one talk, take two. Talk, take two, two, talk, two, talk. Talk, tick, talk, talk. That was a good one. <laughs> like um, Britney Spears' hit song, Talk t- t- Sick. <laughs> um, so yeah so when we come back uh, but my prompt is is that this year has been a wild mm. ride mm-hmm. um, especially at the con circuit uh, so much so that I want to know what is your 2023 funniest or weirdest <laughs> story from our tour this year mine will be actually from the last con we were at mm-hmm. I accidentally <laughs> took over a panel that was not mine. And it was because there was like a, a chill hangout room. And me and my table formed the Council of Chaos. And I, one of the many things that took place in this evening is I got to, with my nine foot bull whip, whip a human being that I did not know in front of an entire room full of people. It's and that so was his choice. Because his other choice was getting kicked in the balls by his fiance. So that is one of many things. That's not even the weirdest thing that happened in this whole just chaos-filled night fuel. It was awesome. It was awesome. I had the Council of Chaos. They're the real ones forever. And I love them. The Council of Chaos. Council of Chaos. Also... Uh, Josh Wilson at the same at the same panel spanked me so hard that it shattered my lanyard on the other side of my body. Don't ask why Corey needed to be spanked. He always needs to be. He needs to be put in line. They nobody can hurt me except for Josh. Josh hurt me. <laughs> but nobody can hurt me. Nobody you can't else. hurt me. Nobody can hurt me. Nobody can hurt me. I was spanked by my mom until I was seventeen. I've got buns of steel. I don't know. I've seen your mom. She's. She, she had a two by four that she hit me with. Oh well, my god! They call that abuse. <laughs> 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 I 
I, the idea that she has a full size two by four <laughs> and she stands no, like several though. feet away. So my mom stopped being so when we need so my dad used to make her custom paddles because what happened was she used to spank us with a spoon, but then one broke on my butt cheek and the handle went into my butt cheek. <laughs> so my mom pulls it out, tapes it back together, and finishes spanking me. And then she. I had feel to, like the stabbing kind of makes up for the rest. Of the <laughs> yeah. It's like, nope, that's not good enough. You still, I still owe you some spanks. No, there were, there were set numbers and she had to hit the set numbers. And so she had my mom, my dad, uh, because he's a carpenter, make her some custom ones. And then those over. So by the time that we stopped getting spankings, they were like made of oak. They were two, what, what is it? Was two, two feet in length. you with like I love that, I'm glad the statue of limitations has run out. Two, two yeah. feet, two feet in length. And they were double handled, like you could hold them with both hands, and they looked like cricket bats. And what was worse, which what, this is what I knew that my mom might be psychotic, was that she used to write like weird stuff on them, like <gasps> smiley faces, and that said "Have a nice day," even though the only purpose these things had was to spank us. It was written backwards, and she'd always give it fresh ink. So when she hit, yeah, I was like, oh, like is this... <laughs> yeah, this is this is real. She used to wear batting gloves when she spanked us. That's like a psychological she would, tactic. She would do like warm ups and yeah. stretches. And she would. It was actually really messed up what she would do. It was really messed up. She would like come in and now if my mom ever watches this episode, this is how I remember. I don't care what you think the truth is. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, I can't. I'm leaning around so that I can see. And so she would come in and so she would send us in and then like we had to put our hands on on the bed and that's like if we if we moved, we got more spankings <gasps> because we weren't being respectful. And then she'd come in and she like, and she had all of the paddles in between the mattress and where her and her bed frame, because her bed frame was like a water bed frame that she had just shoved a mattress in now, because the water beds are terrible. And so then she'd search for one she liked, and she put it on the bed, and then she like put the gloves on, never breaking eye contact. And if we broke eye contact, it was a sign of weakness. <laughs> and so, and then she'd be like, you know what you did? Like, yeah. It's like, okay, this is how many spankings you get. Okay. And if we moved at all, we moved our butt, she would hit whatever, she would swing at like one height. And whatever was in front of that height was where we got hit. So if we like ducked down, she'd hit us in the lower back. It's like when you windmill. You're like, hey, if you walk into it, it's your own fault. <laughs> you know? So... So yeah, and so that's how. We this is where here. all of Corey's problems start. I also and love just so everyone knows this that is... now, if you ever talk about your mom in front of me, I'm gonna imagine principal. <laughs> I'm gonna imagine uh, principal Trunchbull from from Matilda. Oh my god, yes. Yeah, like the chokey, but it's a spoon. But it's a spoon. Oh no. They didn't look like spoon. They look more like cricket back by the time we were done. Oh, god. Yeah. They look more like they're. Are they now like above the mantle that she? Keeps I don't know what like? happened to them. Mom, what happened to all the paddles? Where did they go? You had like a house worth of paddles. Listen, here's what I'm imagining. Just like each time one of her children has a child, it's like, here, I must bestow upon you a paddle. All the paddles. <gasps> oh, yeah. Guess what? None of the children Or she children. sold them on Etsy to alternative lifestyles. <laughs> I that. thought this was supposed to be PG thirteen. No, yeah, we, we quickly abandoned that rating almost every episode. Yeah, it happens. Everyone. Almost every episode. All right, Aaron, oh, what's what's a memory this year yeah, from your cons? <coughs> I've never heard someone clear their throat like that. What a drama queen. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes. More attention. I always do, Corey. You would know, wouldn't you? <laughs> I also snort attention. Exactly. Um, so, my favorite con memory. I'm going to give a shout out to Clara because I had a fan. No, here it is. Here's the memory. <laughs> so you just sparked a memory in me. And if you don't take that memory, I know. I I'm take taking it. I'm taking the memory. Okay, so. Con memory. Number one, shout out to Clara, who's one of our Oklahoma members, who we're going to see at OkieCon. She uh, resides in Oklahoma. Uh, her family also uh, resides Oklahoma, in Oklahoma. Residing. Um, but she does as well. And 
unlike me. Yeah, um, that's the but right thing. yes, thank you, Christian. But our first time meeting each other was us living in a room together for a weekend, and it was great. We bonded immediately. It Dude, was fantastic. That weekend was great. What a like, weird way to put that. Living in a room. It's like a hotel room. Living it, in a room. They together. were in the choky. <laughs> no, that weekend was great because I had my own room. I didn't have to see anybody. Like, they're like, oh, we're going to go for breakfast and brunch. I was like, I'm sleeping in. Yes. Oh, it well, was awesome. Any who's else. Christian and I drove from Dallas to Houston in my little 2015 Nissan Rogue. Um, and the next morning, Danny, Clara, and David Matthew Rudd, Matthew David Rudd. Matthew David, David Matthew, Matthew Rudd. Rudd. <laughs> Look, he, sorry, Matt. Um, you know the fantastic voice actor named Rudd David Matthews. <laughs> of the Dave Matthews band. <laughs> like, my name is Kelly Aaron Noble. Yeah, um, I am so... Phillips Jordan Corey. Uh, I am yep. Alexander Eris, the Christian. Yeah. I am Christian. Phillips Yoshiko Danny. <laughs> Beautiful. Now that we're done making fun of me. Oh, um, we're not. No, no don't think it's that we're never done. gonna end. But I reside have... currently in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> We had to go to the mall and then CVS. And when we got to my car, I was like, does my car smell funny? I hope my car doesn't smell funny. Because um, that's just a constant fear. So we went to the mall, got some food, came back from the mall, and there was an ungodly amount of like there was like kind of a weird smell and I noticed some flies and this, I'm like this, this memory is visceral for me this is weird <laughs> then we went to CVS and when we came out there were literally flies all over the front of my car and I'm like I don't know what this is there's a, did I hit a bird what is this and then we all get in the car and I'm like I don't know what's happening and then was it you no it was Matt it was Matt, Matt said I don't want to. I don't want to um, alarm you, but there's definitely a dead baby bird in the front of your hood. He's like, I've seen it this whole time. What? He didn't say anything. He didn't say anything. That was if he said something, he thought he was gonna have to handle it. That was the most Matt Rudd story I've ever heard. He and then sees we a problem, does nothing to solve it. We proceeded to freak out and go, what? And then we all get out of the car. Look at this hideous dead baby bird. Grody. I'm, I'm moist. I don't... <laughs> and we all said, we have to pull it off. But none of us wanted to do it. None of... Corey wasn't there for this. He does not... There was a video of this, so... Christian also wasn't there. So I remember that morning... We were I, having a fantastic time. Yeah, I woke up seeing messages that they're all out and doing stuff. I was like, oh, I kind of wish I woke up earlier. And I heard the story. I was like, I'm so glad. I <laughs> so me. then I tried to pick it up. I put a bag on my hand. I tried to, and it was so, so squishy. <laughs> I, 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 and then I said, ah! I was flat out on my phone so I could check out for this story. I, I, I jumped I back into the car. I don't want to be here. We all... And then Clara, like a champion she is, said, I got this. She gets out of the car with the same bag that she puts it on her hand. She's like... But she put it on inside out, so the part that was actually touching the bird. Yeah, yeah, she wanted the full experience. Yeah. But then she did say, pull up to that trash can. So we, yeah, we moved the car to get closer to a trash can. In front of a really nice place. Yeah, it was it was luxury. Yeah, I don't remember what store it was, but it was like a Louis Vuitton store or something. Like, like way too nice for us to be ripping off this dead baby bird and throwing it in the trash. So she gets up, she, she grabs it with the bag, and she throws it in the trash, and we're all like, yeah! And the flies went away. Yeah. They did. They left my car. It was a beautiful thing. You guys brought that back. Like, you guys brought that to Houston from Dallas. Apparently, yeah. 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 I parked my, uh, my car under a tree that day. And I remember um, thing driving comes. out like we left. And it was under the tree. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. that one couldn't fly. And then, Obviously not. And then right. that day I heard the story and I went and I had chicken strips. And I was so excited. It was so uh, good. 
And then at that same con, I ended out the weekend listening to <laughs> romance novels at Lauren Landa's table. Me and Clara oh. listening to like spicy romance novels. Oh. Um, in between her being like, oh, there's someone there to talk to me. And we're like, oh, sorry, pardon us. I have a story about that, but it's not about cons at all. So I won't. It's so when I walked into like right before a show and you were there like on the verge of tears. And I was oh. like, what's going on? What's what's wrong? Are you okay? She's like, oh, he, I'm listening to an audio book and he died. And I was like, shut up. Don't. No, no. But it was, <laughs> it was more dramatic than that. Because I was literally like sitting there like this and he walks in and he's like what's wrong and i'm like he died they killed him. like who died, died. Who? Oh, i'm listening to an audio i'm listening to an audio book i was i was a little like you don't do that to me no you should have seen him he walked in he froze and then you just see him go like he's like i unfortunately have to deal with i this. was the first he one there. sat down yeah. and was like waiting for me to like go into it um and then no what you said afterwards was this is gonna be this is gonna be a real bummer to start off the show this I, way yeah you're in the back crying because someone died i was like this we're supposed to be doing comedy <laughs> what is this okay cool that was your thing danny what's your story it's kind of they're kind of two stories so they both happened last year at last mm. okicon mm -hmm. I started out the year with we rang in the new year. Corey flashed my butt on stage. <laughs> what? <laughs> during the rave. How did oh, this I happen? Never heard this no, story. it was during the rave. So it was on stage during the rave. Okay. I was wearing a skirt. Yeah. Corey was very, very excitedly like, like uh, picking me up, kind of like dirty dancing style. Oh. <laughs> he picked me up and twirled me. I was wearing underwear. I don't want to be. Like I was wearing underwear. It wasn't like, but I was just like they all saw my cheeks. <laughs> oh no! And, and he like. And that's then, your favorite memory no, from this no, year? No, 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 no. <laughs> yep. a favorite. Danny, I, that sounds like a Danny thing to love. <laughs> no, it wasn't a favorite memory. I thought it was just something memorable. It was just a, oh, okay, it's memorable. Just a memorable. That's fine. Also, I, at that same con, I had drank too much that evening. Mm -hmm. So the next day, I had I walked into the new year with explosive um, stomach issues. You've been like kind of weirdly sick at so many cons this year. I know. And I was running to the bathroom because I <laughs> had a lot of stomach issues. And so I just remember at that con, I was like, I never want to have explosive diarrhea at another con again. Yeah. That's all I remember wants, leaving. What, 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 what is a good moment to have explosive diarrhea? Can you explain when to me? I'm who, at my when, house. When, when I'm at my one, house alone. When does one want it? Exactly. When I'm at my house alone. And I can just like freely go in there. Yeah. It's just freely. Like, <laughs> like if, if gun to my head, I have to have diarrhea. Yeah. That's what I want to do. Yeah. That's like, that's at home. Nothing to do today. Nothing to do. Yeah. Have you ever gotten explosive diarrhea before you've had to like go somewhere? Yeah. I don't go. Yeah. Uh, I you know what? No. You know what the worst one is, is when you're doing something important and then you suddenly are revealed to have explosive diarrhea like oh. where you're just like you're you know you're doing like i it's usually on shoots and i'll be in a take and we're about to do like i've been waiting for an hour and a half two hours before we're about to do the take and all of a sudden <laughs> and it's like <laughs> i so i was doing walla at crunchy roll one day. oh my god oh god <laughs> my stomach hurt so it was actually during psychopaths the <gasps> movie my stomach hurt so bad it gave me sweats and i was just like i know i can't i can't release any of this pressure because there's three other people in this tiny booth with me and i was so on i was in rigs booth too. one of my things i wanted to ask at, uh, so at a panel is to voice actors as have you ever have you ever crop dusted another one of your performers no 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 i haven't no. i a hundred percent have by accident like yeah. I was having a pressure issue, it's like it hit me, and I'm and I'm leaving the booth, and some of it, you know, out, you know, where you. Yep. <laughs> so, it just sneaks right out. They're such small rooms. They're so such tiny. a small room. I've definitely burped really. Oh like, my smelly god. In the booth before other people in the booth. Danny one time did it full send and didn't realize how bad it smelled. And I, was I like, had to own up to it in I, the booth with like, everyone. I was like, we, that was me. Like, I'm sorry. It was like, <laughs> and I like straight up was like, this is like the weirdest assertion of dominance. I was like, that's me. I just. 
she just and she blew it at bo- everyone involved. Like she goes, <laughs> like I think something glitched in her mind and she forgot she was out in public. <laughs> so it's just I just I couldn't hold it back. I couldn't so hold it back, fun. and I was so like, she I'm just deep. Got in there. We all got cans on, and she's like. Bleh. Like, like make sure each of us got a little bit of it. I wanted you to know I love you all equally. And also, too, it's not like you can like leave the the recording booth and go like fart once you leave it because you once you leave the recording booth, you go into the director's, the director's studio room. You want you don't want a director smelling you. Wait, you don't no, want no, to no. smell you on the inside, so you have to wait. <laughs> and he's like, oh, cool, I'll just like leave the studio room. Well, now you're in Crunchyroll like as all a whole, late. and so you have to wait. Until you leave the building, really, or go into the elevator. I've done that before, right? You've just, gone into the elevator, elevator just to fart. That's not, not a bathroom. Not to just to fart. I'm gonna just go to the bathroom. I was full. I was panicking. I was like, <laughs> I was one like methane atom away from floating out the window. Like it was bad. I will. I will flat out. I won't use the bathroom for anything other than a number one up up in Crunchyroll. I'll yeah. go downstairs. Of course. And somebody came in. They're like, "What you doing down here?" And I was like, "I'm not gonna lie, busted ass." I, <laughs> like I came down here to light a fire to God. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care about these corporate normies. No. <laughs> Y'all are so specific about where you go to the restroom. I don't know how you. Why go to are the you restroom. not? Are you indiscriminate? Are you like, are you a barnyard animal just <laughs> wailing? <laughs> whoever happens to be unfortunate enough to be just in your chewing cut, just laying down cow patties, just like a horse just running majestically through a pasture, lighting a fire as it goes by. <laughs> Like why? I was just are you are you not you untrained heathen? Like, I was just gonna point you, out the fact that at this last I'll time, do it at your face. I'll do I, it. I'll no. sit on your lap and, and just warm your thigh. I will lock you in a closet I'll, and just open it just I'll, enough. I'll straight jump to your face. Grab you on both sides of your head, and as I'm suplexing you to the ground, make sure you know who Mama is. <laughs> I will seal your lips to mine. <laughs> I will create a vacuum seal with your nostrils and, and mainline everything I've ever thought about oh down is, your throat. Is this really how we want to end our year? Look, we end our I'm year. I'm ending it like I began. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> this is the real With explosive life. down your me, baby. <laughs> My, dude, there was an episode it was just me and Danny. I told her about the time I almost pooped. No, I've done like two different poop stories. I filled a beanbag chair and sent it to you on Christmas. I have a pretty dramatic vomiting story, pre-performance vomit story. From the con? No. Oh, no, I need to know how con. indiscriminate you are. <laughs> what? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, no, con, I'm just talking. Uh, what? You said you're like from this previous con. You had a you had, you pooped in the hallway. What? What happened? I didn't. No, I was gonna mention how Danny legit. So I stayed with Corey and Danny. Um, it, we all have to share hotel rooms at cons. Yeah. So I stayed in a room with them, and Danny legit left one morning to go poop. Down in, a, in, in the lobby, the lobby downstairs. And I'm like, that's very considerate, but also like, you guys gonna have to put on your makeup. No, no, no. I have, I have, the, I have the best poop story from this past con. So, oh, this is such a good episode. So, uh, Friday morning, I, I woke up, and Danny <laughs> called me. She says, hey, what? Uh, we need the con schedule on Discord. Oh, yeah. I'm driving, can't do it. I yeah. said, you know what? That's fine. I got you. I'll do it. I did it. I did it first. I actually wrote it out. Oh. You, you just took a screenshot. Yeah. We did it because Aaron was asking, what's the schedule? Yeah. And so, I did it. I was very kind. Obviously... Aaron never saw it, and but I was like, okay, okay, I have to go to the bathroom, so I'll do this while I'm sitting on the toilet. Yeah. So I sit on the toilet, and I hear voices coming from behind me. And I was like, ah, oh, that kind of sucks. Like I can hear the next door neighbors. 
wait a minute, the next door neighbors are Aaron and Corey at the moment. And then I hear, like, cutting through fog is as clear as a bell as Danny's voice on speakerphone. Like, it is so clear. It's coming right through the vents. And I hear Corey going, Okay, well, that's great. I love you. Bye. And I went, I love you! (laughs) Through the vents. And then Corey was like, are you next door? Yeah? I'm pooping. Me too! This is weird. (laughs) I went, I love it! Yay! (laughs) And then I asked Corey what he was doing in the bathroom because they were, he was just like talking to people and he's like, I was pooping with Christian. (laughs) And then I heard Aaron yell, Christian, can you hear me? I went, yep. I'm 35 years old, and on this podcast, I've never in my life talked more about poop. <laughs> I know. I don't believe that. Uh, I, but I, you know what I've learned through this podcast is that Erin will poop on anything. Anything. And she'll anywhere. fart on anything. <laughs> Anytime. She's basically a reindeer. That's <laughs> not true. She recorded I all of I will vomit it. I want you to know, ladies and that. gentlemen of the, of the fans that watch this show week in and week out, just know that Aaron Noble will fart or poop anywhere. It doesn't matter where she is. It doesn't matter what she's doing. She'll drop trow and... She she actually recorded all the lines from this yeah. psychopath movie. She from looked the toilet. Rig, She yeah, looked Jonathan I hate rig. you. I hate you so much. So whenever you're watching... I hate... Shut your damn she mouth. Looked, how shut you? your damn mouth. You shut your goddamn mouth. She looked Jamie Markey dead in the eyes. No! And no! <laughs> shut up! I don't know what you're doing, but shut up. I don't want to hear she the rest how, of If you want to know how you get into Crunchyroll, you look Jamie no! Markey dead in the eyes. You just and, turned this off. And you just <sighs> blow hard. I hate you so much. And then, so and then after you. you've asserted your dominance over Jamie Markey. <laughs> For you go. I you want fi- to kill you. You find your next victim, no. which is which I, is Monica Rial. I hate you so much. And you fart in her beauty. So and you much. fart in her beautiful teeth. Shut your mouth. Actually, um, at this last con, Alexis Tipton told me, like, oh, hey, we all went to lunch earlier. And, <laughs> and then after you've made a victim of Monica Rial, you go to Caitlin Glass and you look at her Frenchies and you own most of her Frenchies. I mean, I saw her look at Matthew David Rudd and I mean, I didn't think that, that man has children, like yeah. little children, but she scared him with her friends. It was yeah. actually funny. They both pulled each other's fingers at the same time and it was actually... And incarnate. the manlier fart came out. <laughs> I hate all of you so it much. Was- can turn I, us back up? Can uh, I remind no, I you? I actually turned you guys off. But it's just that she was peeking the mic super hard. I yeah. hate you all so much. Can I remind no, you, Erin? because Aaron. I was screaming in fear because you realize once you put this out onto the internet, it's public and permanent, and that's, someone could turn sound lights. That's 100%. How you get into Crunchyroll? It's how no! you. Get, that's how you started. Shut up! <laughs> that Shut that is the definitive. Up! That is the definitive, definitive answer you on so how much. you start a career. Can I, I hate real, you. Real, real quick, can I can I just remind you, Aaron? You asked us to be on this episode. <laughs> you said, "Oh wow, I want to spend more time with you." You guys. you get <laughs> you get Jamie Markey to suck. <laughs> He's a big brother right now. That's what he's doing. He's already the oldest in his family. This is so embarrassing. <laughs> oh my god. Why are you trying to ruin my life? Monica Rial farts no! too. I shut with her, up. with her beautiful, perfect smile. <laughs> Except hers are princess-like. Are, yours, yeah. are, yours are like a Texan in heat. Goodbye, I'm done. <laughs> oh my god! I can't take this anymore. Uh, 
That's so it's, funny. You opened this up because you were like, I'm you all are though. so particular. I'm <laughs> you all are so <laughs> particular with where you fart. No, it's like, all no, right, you're opening you didn't this need up. To bring you're bring you're people, spreading other those people butt cheeks. You're I, allowed to make fun of me. You can't embarrass the shit out of me. That's, that's, I love that at any point in this episode, Static could go and be like, due to technical emergencies. Yeah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, YouTube cuts it down. So my, oh my I think my most memorable moment from this year, <laughs> just to, to move re- on. We're trying to recover. I know, I know. While you're both I blame recovering, Corey. Oh, I'm gonna die. Oh, I, I hope you die of embarrassment. <laughs> I'm gonna die. You're currently dying. So I just, I need this to go into the unlisted section where no one can see this ever again. <laughs> And if you're listening on Spotify, that didn't happen. Ah! No. Oh my God, this is my nightmare. I hope I'm gonna send this directly to Jamie. I <laughs> swear to you know God, what? if you, know what you do, do, I'm, gonna I'm clip going it. to cry. I'm gonna clip it. I'm, I'm gonna clip going it, to and then I'm gonna. You know what I'm, you know what I'm really gonna do? I'm gonna clip it, and then I'm gonna horribly edit it, where it's like, yeah, the only way to get into voice acting is by sucking a BB. And then I'm gonna, hate I'm you. gonna splice to another section where you're Jamie, gonna be like, yes, that's true. I'll yeah. Save you. I'll save you. Stop. I won't save. You. I, I'll save you. Okay. Oh my god, Corey. You're so, so mean to me. My, He's enjoying this. My 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 I'm most memorable crying. moment this year for me was uh, we went to the co- same con where the baby bird was. <laughs> it was dead. Right. Well, I, that's why it was, was. Oh, oh, okay. So while we're driving, <laughs> uh, again, I'm with Erin. She says, oh, hey, what's your character for the tavern? And I was like, oh, yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. And uh, she's like, oh, yeah, I talked with, with Danny and Corey about, like, the tavern. We're all going to be dressing up like it's going to be in the underworld. Mm-hmm. So we've got uh, uh, Hades and Hermes and Persephone. Like, what are you going to do? I was like, I didn't know this was a thing. Um, I knew we were doing the tavern. I didn't realize it was a whole, like, dress-up affair. So I didn't bring anything. And we're like, well, what are you going to do? I was like, I don't know. (laughs) So we do this tavern thing where it was just like, you know, the VIPs of the con, the drinks and food, and we were playing characters. And so I wrapped myself up in a bed sheet and did that. Yeah, yeah you made yourself a toga. Yeah, I did. And I flashed my nipples at the owners yes. of the con on accident. I didn't mean to. But you were guys that no one cared. Yeah, like, they were, they were in, you were in, everyone was into it. They're like, oh, oh yeah. yes. Yeah. I oh, mean, yeah. Christian's nipple. I definitely, I saw their faces. No one was into it. He was hunkulies. <laughs> I was, yeah, I was hunkulies. Oh, yeah. Or thickulies. Hunky-lies. Thickulies, hunkulies. Yeah. Same thing. I mean, that's still less embarrassing than how Aaron got it. <laughs> my God. I... <laughs> <laughs> Please stop. I'm I will begging stop. you. I will stop. I'm it's, begging it's you to killing stop. Me. It's so funny. It's literally killing you. It's killing you're, you you're funnily. Fooling. You're fooling I'm shriveling me. inside and dying. I'm not going to lie. I, if this makes you feel better, you, we were all yelling so loud. There's probably no way you could understand. No. Oh, yeah. That was the point of peeking it uh, so that no one could hear uh, it. I'm that is the funniest go, thing that's happened on this podcast. I'm going to have to go through and probably like listen to that to see if it's even usable for it's just, I hope it's not. And if it's not, they'll We'll be clean just, it up and make sure that you all can hear I it. I will reenact it. Yeah. Uh, no. Just myself. No. I can play all the parts. And then we'll I send will, it yeah. to Jamie. No! Yeah. I, I want to die. So we're, we'll use that as a voice sample for AI. I'm going to bring it. Uh, I'm pretty sure I have an MF Go session next week. I'll bring it, show it to Caitlin. We're very close perfect. friends. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Good. Good. We'll, we'll put it on I, a USB and just hand well, it out. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing, though, is that it's you saying those things. I see Corey's eyebrows. So they have nothing to do with me. If you were to clip it, it would just be you saying I those know. terrible, nasty things. I know, and it's so great. <laughs> Because they know what to expect from me. (laughs) It will affect me now. (laughs) (laughs) They'll they'll seem like, "Mm, yeah, that makes sense. That tracks. Oh, God, he's Uh, always talking. I will say, though, I love 
that I've gotten to a point with in my cultural career where I can now start throwing takes on purpose, and I'm having such a good time doing it. Oh, really? Oh, it's the best. It's so fun, especially in MF Ghost. Like, I... I've thrown so many takes, just throwing. By them. the way, I was gonna deal you a compliment because before I came here, I was watching MF Ghost, and you did a really good job. But now you have hurt my feelings. Therefore, maybe I won't say that. But you did. You just said it. I know, but I take it back. <laughs> take one talk where friendships are ruined. Yeah. Take one where we never talk again. Yeah. yeah. All right, Danny. What's the your talk segment? that ends talking. What's your segment, Danny? Mine is actually kind of a lightning round. Everyone has New Year's resolutions. Okay. What's your New Year's anti resolution? Like something you do not want to do in the New Year? I know Aaron's hang out with Corey less. Hang out with Corey <laughs> or at hang all. Hang out with Corey yeah. more. Yeah, doing another episode of this podcast. <laughs> so, my, my, what is my like, my New Year's anti resolution yeah. is, ooh, uh, I think. This next year, I want to, um, I'm trying to think exactly what, I, first thing that came to mind is I want to eat less, um, I want to, I want to eat less bland food. Mm. Okay, it really so. affected me this last year, and I thought, I can only live one life, I want to die in flavor. Got you. <laughs> yeah. Ghost pepper on everything. Gross. If you yeah. if you don't want to have diarrhea at cons, these are terrible choices. I didn't say that. Okay. <laughs> I'm willing to, to uh, what is it? I'm willing to get the repercussions of my actions okay. here. Yeah. Yeah. So the like, consequences. You just do a cleanse before each Bring, con. I mean, I'm gonna cleanse at the con. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> uh, for me, what's my anti res? <laughs> I, my anti resolution is getting fatter. I think. Oh. I don't. I definitely do not want to keep getting fatter. So that's that's good. I was Eat gonna say. Eat more bland food. <laughs> no, I love bland food. I do. I love it so much. I grew up in Indiana. Like we had corn. That was about as spicy as it got. Corn. Oh yeah. I'm as spicy as milk, boy. <laughs> exactly. I. Mayonnaise. Mayonnaise. Yeah. My New Year's anti-resolution is to motivate Aaron to murder me. You're not going to do that? Already done. <laughs> Already done. Already done. Anti -res yeah. Your anti-resolution is that you don't want me to murder you? It's well, going to motivate you to marry. Delete <laughs> it. <laughs> delete. Okay, okay. I'm coming back to my zone. Um, so, I think uh, if you haven't noticed, I tend to live my life in chaos. So my anti-resolution would be that I would like to not live my life in as much chaos. A quiet life. A quiet, beautiful life. Is that what you life. want? A, a bit more stability? Oh, you, so you, that's the thing you do not want in the new I would no, not. No, no. Um, I would I not develop a friendship with me chaos. if that's what oh, you, you want. Oh, you want um, less chaos. I want less chaos, at least, maybe not in my life, but in my home. Mm. You should not be friends with me if that's what you want in life. Yeah. I want to... Guess what? You don't live in my house. Therefore... <laughs> I'm like a cockroach if I go in your house once. I guess leave. what? I'm very good at squishing cockroaches. I live in a shitty apartment at the moment. <laughs> I deal with cockroaches, lizards, and mice. Not all in my apartment, just mostly the roaches. But I have caught a mouse and a lizard with some Tupperware. Do you use place. that voice when yes. you do it? Yeah. Yes. Wow, hey, really can each of you can you, can you do me a favor? Roaches. Can each of you say the word she just said for like containers? Tupperware. Like Tup the way she says it? Or just how no, we would how say would you it? say it? Tupperware. Danny. Tupperware? Aaron. Tupperware. 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 Danny's is the one that's wrong. How is that? What Tupperware? She, she says Tupperware. Tupperware. That's Tupperware. um it's Tupperware? Tupperware. Yeah. Tupper so it's a P. Upper, like Upper, but, but with Tupper. A T. But I will tell you Tupperware. I'm a hundred percent in <laughs> camp Tupperware because it's a little tub that you put stuff in. Tupperware. Mm. I thought it was because I put food in there that makes me tubby. Boy. I, put, I put boy. I put burgers, but the buns are pizzas. I have a quick question for Corey, our tech guy. Huh. Uh, did my brother say hi? Uh, nobody, no. 
Is he just is he just creepily my brother's unless just you're watching. unless your brother is five onic one oh one. There's someone on there right now. Five onic. There was yeah. five people that heard. Oh your God! Your... No. I, uh, I there are five people that heard your strategy for voice acting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hate you there, so much. I'm getting so many private messages right now asking. By, me, oh, finally, hey. there's a definitive answer on how you get into Crunchyroll and Shut how you get into up. voice Aaron, acting. Aaron, makes you feel the... better, Aaron. I had to sleep with Corey. <laughs> <laughs> Again. There you go, guys. There is your answer for every single con from here on out. You to get into Crunchyroll, you need to sleep with Corey J. Phillips. That is Corey J. Phillips. He is the new lead on MF Ghost, and he likes whips. I'm gonna get so many dude lades. <laughs> I'm gonna get so many dude lades. That's gonna be wild. Dude lades? Yeah, dude. dude. I will say it. The percentage of <laughs> male to females who want to be in voice acting, most of the people that ask me are dudes. I know that yeah. would, that was the majority of the people in every voiceover class that I've had. Yeah. Right. I was going to say, like, outside... It is an 80-20 split real easy. Yeah. <laughs> At cons, I've only ever had one female ask me about voice acting. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Where are you ladies at? When yeah. are you going to show up? Well, guess what? There are more male roles than there are female roles. That's very true. I think. Yeah, but all the male a... roles are little boys who can only be done by girls. That's fucking bullshit. That is, I know. But there's a lot it more. It is true. You know why that is, than... right, Aaron? Why they can all girls can only be the ones that be little boys? Because if the show goes on for longer than I don't know a year, yeah. they age out of that voice real quick because mm -hmm. of testosterone. Girls do not, so they can maintain it for decades. Yeah, that's true. I, I do like, like it though way. when animated shows will actually age the characters up to match the voice. But that's usually Western because they're it animating is. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and but even like, then they can't keep up because the yeah. voice changes so quickly. Like as the voice of uh, the the. Unless you're Dante Bosco and your voice never ages. Oh, that's, yeah, true. that's true. I really like um, like Adventure Time. Where you you hear him going through puberty and his voice will squeak and yeah. they write it into the show. It's so funny. And they did the same thing with um, Steven Universe. Mm. Yeah, I really like those shows. All right. Uh, so my segment uh, is us. Everyone's going to be bragging about themselves because you guys have won a lot this year, and I want to hear about it. What are your wins for 2023? I was I in a movie. Oh. I was in a movie, and then I scored my first core lead at Funimation in MF Ghost in the anime. I scored a lead in an anime, which, mind you, I will forever be in debt to Rig for doing this. In the anime, that was my very first anime. Mm -hmm. So, like, the full circle moment. So it's like MF Ghost and then Raincoat are like... And then I got, like, two national ads this year, so... Did you join up with your current agent this year? Did I? Did I? No, yeah. that was the end of last year. Oh, was it? Okay. The very end of last year. Okay. Yeah. I think you've signed in like November or December. Gotcha. So it was, it was a... It's really close. Yes, because I just I just renewed with them for the for yeah. for uh, in December. So gotcha. they sent me an email. I was like, we're keeping you on. I was like, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Of course. Oh, that's so cool. So... This past year, I got to join this incredible improv team called Take One. Well, didn't you also start doing stuff at Crunchy too? Uh, no, that was November of last year. Mm. But this year, I had a my uh with a boot camp in there. Um, a movie, uh, anime movie, go to movie theaters. It was shown across the country, and my name was set under main cast. Yep, Which is very your first exciting. sizable lead. And we all revealed how she got that. Mm -hmm. I, <laughs> oh my God, I hate you so much. Yeah. Yeah. I hate you so much. Yeah. <laughs> I, I want to punch you. I'm just I will kidding. reveal how I actually I'm just kidding. Oh, I'll, I'll it was a you. fucking mistake. No, she, she, they, she, they gave me a bit part. They're like, this person may or may not come back. She has one scene. And then the next movie, she was one of the leads. That's uh, so. First of all, first of all, it's not a mistake. I don't think it was a mistake. It's not a mistake. So that is the most common occurrence in Crunchy to the point that that was one of the first ways 
I found out that it's how you get your like life defining roles mm-hmm. at, at back when it was Funimation, where they're like, actually, most of the people that get their breaks, how they get them is a bit role turns into a lot bigger deal with simulcasting because they don't know who's going to be a big deal later on. And so that's how a lot of people get their shots is what I would like to lovingly name the bit lottery. Mm. And you just won the bit lottery. Yeah. Not just one. You're also a very talented actress. Otherwise, yeah, you were I great in the movie, you by the way. You were fantastic like, in the movie. Watched it. I mean, it's it's odd that you had to do what you did to get her. <laughs> yeah, oh, she... my God. I, I can't be serious for very I'd long. Like to cry. Um, and then also I went on my first out of state theatrical gig mini tour i originated a role in an original immersive musical um and i survived it and that is very big win for me um those are those are my two big career wins but i think the biggest win of all is the wonderful friends that I have made along the way. Which she's now regretting. Corey yeah, Phillips. Excluding Corey Phillips. Excluding yeah. Corey Corey Phillips. Redacted. Redacted. Yes. So how uh, Erin got on our I team was she farted into a jar. <laughs> and she brought it to the audition. I'm done. I'm so <laughs> done. I'm so done. I love... <laughs> this is why I'll marry Christian after Danny dies. <laughs> <laughs> This right here, this is why. Because I'm never alone in my bullshit. Never Ah! alone. She's got the I'll do it. I'll do it. Don't you dare. Drink it? You can have some. I I like sharing with my friends. Uh cool. So oh good lord. Wait, wait, give me some of that too. She me she she borked. It was a bork. I got on the CW. That's, <laughs> that's such a funny time to do it. Swig. I got on the CW. I was pretty, I was pretty excited about it. Yeah. Yeah. That was she crazy. shares a screen with one of her great loves. <clears throat> yeah. I kind of do. Jared Padalake. I, do, I got into super. So I should also point out um, the very beginning of this year. I got on Walker, which is on the CW, and I, I have auditioned for Walker for years. I've right. auditioned ever since the, it's kind of a reboot since the reboot came out. Sure. I don't know if it's considered a reboot or a, just a sequel, but I... It's a, it's a, it's a sequel. I okay, think. so I have been auditioning for years since the sequel came out, and I'm going to be honest, some of my first auditions for it weren't great. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm just going to be like, I was a, kind of a new actor then, I definitely wasn't ready at that time for it, and... I got on finally this past year, and I did not know who Jared Padalecki was. Mm-hmm. I mean, I knew that this was a this was an actor that existed, but I had never watched Supernatural. I'd never seen his. You stuff. just weren't a fan. Yeah, like yeah. I wasn't a fan. I wouldn't have recognized him or anything. But I got on the show. Um, I have a, a small scene on it, and I got really really excited. Well, after it, I actually I did not meet him there. He was not in my my specific scene. He was there like the next day or the day before, but. We started watching Supernatural, Corey and I. And so it was really funny later on. Because then I'm like, oh, oh, wow. I guess, like, he is kind of a really big deal. Yeah. Like, if you're, like, if you like Supernatural. And we got into Supernatural. I will say that uh, I'm a big fan of Dean, personally, mm-hmm. in the show. I love Sam, too. It's great. But, like, uh, I'm Team Dean. Just, and Team, um, what is it, Castiel. So I, I got to do that. I got into Supernatural this year. And another really big win for me this year was I got to do a video game, which is pretty cool. I'd never been in a video game. So that was like, it wasn't a big name video game, but I was just really excited that I could add that to my repertoire as well. So I got to do a video game and that was pretty sweet. That's awesome. And I got to do it in an accent as well. Excellent. Yeah, I got to do it with a British accent. So it's pretty fun. the clients, it was kind of translated. It wasn't like the best translation. Like they were doing some modifications of the translation as we were recording it. And so my character was drunk and they're like, we want you to belch. <laughs> and that was supposed to be sexy in that moment. And the director was like, wait, wait, wait. You know that belching in, in like English and in America and um, basically the what you've translated it to is not a sexy thing. They're like, oh, no, 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 no. I guess we made a, um, a like a hiccup. 
And I was like, those are two very different very things. Very different things. Like, hey, I love you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Which well, we know Danny will do to assert dominance over yeah. an entire room full of people. It's not sexy, but it is dominant. I, could, in, I was in the booth and when I saw that I had to belch, I was like, I can belch on command. Like, if you give me a, uh, if I drink something, I could belch. I can, a, I can belch it's a special. Drinking. Yeah, yeah, I can do it. Yeah, you can't do it without drinking? No, I have to drink something. Uh, I have to drink something. Uh, yeah. Well, you guys are just way sexier than I am. I, That's how I, we got in the crunchy roll. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I burped in the face of my career. Yeah. I, did, yeah. I thought you did it in front of Sabbath. Yeah. No, yeah, I burped at Sabbath as, as an assertion of dominance. Yeah, I, I thought no, you did it you in burped at Sabbath as uh, Vegeta. As Vegeta. Yeah. Oh, my God. That oh, was he loves so Sabbath. embarrassing. He loves. Uh, I love. I do love Sabbath. I love Sabbath a lot. And the he fact that the first time I met him, I had to do his own voice to his face. Yeah. I don't remember who did that to me, but just know I hate you. Yeah. As and much as Aaron hates me. And Sabbath loves it when you do uh, his own characters back at him. Who doesn't? It's his favorite. Who thing. doesn't? It's like, oh, please do that thing that I did. Never and made then me do make this. sure to call them not by their actual name, but by their character name. Yeah, they absolutely adore. Also, that. do a, an impression of Hank Hill and Kermit the Frog, and Elmo. Elmo's a great one. Scooby Doo. Oh. <laughs> oh so, Christian, what about you? What are your wins? I this had year? so many. Anyway, no, uh, no, I had a few. Uh, so, I got my first, like, I, I got, I got my an agent that I was looking for, like, to join their roster for what was years. The agent? Linda McAllister. Yeah. So like I, I've been wanting to get on with them for years. Join I finally Team did. Linda. I did. I'm, yeah. Uh, same. By the way, hi. My name is Erin Kelly Noble. Um, she will fart in I, jars. I'm trying to get an agent. And okay. I'm really wrecking everything. I'm not though. I'm helping. Hi, I'm Erin Noble, and I'll do whatever you need, whatever. Christian, let's go back to your wins. <laughs> Hi, Linda McAllister. You should hire and put on your roster Aaron Noble. Ah, you know what? Screw that. Aww, Go with look. Mary Collins. Mary Collins, she'll do anything. She'll do whatever. I am going to ask you all for your recommendation letters, but Corey, I'm debating whether I actually... I'm with Mary too. Collins. I know. I know. <laughs> I'm going to ask for your recommendation for yeah. Mary Collins. And I... Yeah, I am an evil of necessity. But guess what, Corey? Guess who else? Guess who else I'm gonna ask? Who? Monica Rial. She whispered. Monica she has Rial. a better smile than me. That's true. She does. Okay, yeah, okay, can we can we can we stop? Right. Just pause for like a second and appreciate how nice Monica Rial's smile is. It's, very it's my favorite. It's my favorite smile in the industry. It's very favorite nice. smile in the industry. I mean, it's it's pretty clear why she's done so well in the industry because she's actually really nice. Yeah. Like, I don't know. They always say like nice people do well in yeah. in like you know basically whatever industry they. First want. time that the yeah. nice person didn't finish last, they finish first. Yeah, seriously, and she has helped so many people along the way. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. But I really like to marvel at how like perfect her smile is like she'll <laughs> smile at me and i'm like i feel like i could fight god she also gives really nice hugs oh yeah you know what i'm gonna go on a crusade i'm gonna go on a crusade this year this is my new this is an actual new year's resolution i'm gonna find somebody that gives a better hug than doug jones you want to talk about the best hug you'll ever receive in your entire life Doug Jones gives the best hug. It's like a gangly hug. I don't know. He has like It's because he can hug. envelop your entire soul in it because his arms are so dang long. He oh, he's like if Slender Man was good. Yeah. <laughs> yes. All right, Christian. Sorry we took this over. Continue. I love the idea of telling him that. Yeah. Uh, so not only did I get in with Linda McAllister, who I've been trying to for years, I also got representation for appearances, which is not even something that was yes, on my radar. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, for this year, and so fandom events, fandom they, guests, yeah, or fandom talent, fandom, fandom talent. talent. They also represent Take One. They do, Super and they represent me and Corey. Yeah, so you know they have some hits and misses, but <laughs> that's a really big miss with me. 
Yeah. I snuck in on Christian's coattails. Oh, it's exactly what it was. I was, was, I was sniffing his butt crack. It was I not the other in. way around at all. Uh, Corey farted in a jar. I did. And brought it to Christian. I know. Yeah. I farted in a jar and then handed it to Ben Balmaceda, shoved his nose in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he slapped you with a tortilla. And then he slapped me with a tortilla. The, the jar Corey gave me was, I asked for that. Yeah. Oh, okay. It was a secondhand that's jar. That's personal. You swapped jars. Then I stared Monocle Real. <laughs> okay, leave her alone. Leave her She's and her beautiful nice. smile out of this. My swap goodness. jars is my favorite Star Wars parody. Swap <laughs> jars. Uh, I've got um, some swap jars. <laughs> okay, continue. I love you. Sorry. No, it's fine. Uh, I also got to be main cast for an anime, which was cool. Yes. Yeah. Uh, a video Loves. game that... Swamps, a video game I recorded in the previous year came out. So uh, Diablo. Diablo 4 came out. Yes, yeah. Uh, I enjoyed no. kicking your character off a cliff. I did too, actually. <laughs> he I did he too. deserved it. I went through like a couple different characters and just did it over and over again. I was so excited. <laughs> you lied to each one of them up at the same moment so you could just hop between characters and kick your character. Yeah, that's exactly what I forgot yeah. there was someone... Out in the ether, uh-huh. who not out in the ether that I encountered in the daily life, who was talking about Diablo, and I was like, "Oh, I had a friend who was in that. He got kicked off a cliff for being a cannibal," and they were just silent like that. Oh, yes, I was expecting more. Um, so, well, it's funny because like I didn't find out about it first. Like I, I laughed. I'm glad. But, like, Charlie, another member of Take mm-hmm. One, she, he actually told me about my character before I found my character. He's like, oh, yeah, he's a cannibal in this thing. I was like, oh, that's cool. Um, what? Uh, so, yeah, I was Klops, which was main. I've actually worked with a few different, uh, like, new studios this year, which was cool. Um, I'm going to be a, like, um, secondary cast, I guess, for a live-action dub that's coming out soon. Mm-hmm. And yeah, like I'm gonna be in quite a few different mobile games. I, it's interesting this year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got engaged this year, which is kind of cool. That seems pretty important. Yeah. That, seems pretty that seems kind of like a big deal. So my anti-resolution for next year is to get married. Ha ha ha! Funny jokes. Get engaged again. Get engaged again. Did you put a fart in a jar and give it to her? Oh yeah. That's, that's She's already had so many of those. Our relationship is just fart based. So many. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. So, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Well. Do they want to tell us their, like, great things that happened in the comments? That yeah. Great. Tell if you have, things. yeah, tell us your wins. By the way, MF Ghost just got announced for season two. I can finally say something. Yay! Another 2023 when? win. Is that going to, is that going to happen, like, Next year? Yeah, year? It's, it's scheduled. For, season two is scheduled for 2024. I think Chainsaw Man got announced. I know the movie. The movie, yeah. A movie? A movie was announced, which is pretty cool. And you know what's going to come back? Probably Aki's little brother. Yeah! Yeah, despite him getting wiped off the face of the planet. You know who's Anywhere definitely back. coming back? That random Yakuza that got wiped out in episode one. 100%. So like. <laughs> Totally. Corey and I were both in Chainsaw Man for very short periods of time. Before we both were wiped out. <laughs> Before we both were murdered. Viciously. Really. To be fair, we both deserved it. I, I was an innocent child. They deserve it the most. I was a piece of Yakuza. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. my segment. Do I get a segment? Yeah, you guys or oh, did you have one? Yeah. Yes. yes. Come on. Um, everyone. Tell me has why we hate Corey. <laughs> I was going to say we go in a circle and say what we love about the person in front of us as well as something we love about ourselves. Oh, that's so sweet. Yes. But the only thing in front of me is a camera. Mm. I was thinking going to your left. Okay, okay. Yes. Okay. Specifically because I want Corey to say something nice about me. I was going to say we should go to the right so you can... No, no, I have nothing nice to say about him at the moment because I'm mad at him. Okay. Yes. Yes. It's redacted friendship. It's redacted. Okay. He's the Corey that's formed. I him. am going to make this painful. When do you not do that, Corey? But it's a different kind of pain. Yeah. I will go first. No. Let's do it. Yeah. I was going to make Here's you go last. Silence in the room. Hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, 
the wonderful thing about Erin Noble is that she is unequivocally mm -hmm. talented in this industry. Yep. She will go far, she will outpace us all, mm -hmm. and I will be lucky if I can ride even the tail part of that comet that will crash into this industry. I knew it from the first time I met her. The fact that she got such high recommendations from some of the best in the industry speaks volumes for who she is because to stand out amongst the throngs of people that take classes that are in this industry, the hopefuls, the thousands that ask me to be noticed by the eyes that noticed her is beyond an accomplishment. And the reason being is that I know what it's like. I have struggled my entire career in life to stand out in the way she does effortlessly. Mm -hmm. The fact that she got a lead in a movie, the fact that she continues to work there took me ages longer to establish. So of course, of course I would bring her onto this team even though she had no improv experience prior. Of course. That was an absolutely easy choice to make. And the only reason I bully her relentlessly is because of the sheer, unabashed force of jealousy that exists inside my soul to her ability and to her talent. That's very sweet. I also, just a quick little side add, the ability that she has to make friends <clears throat> instantly. Yes. Is, I, I admire it. God, she just must have sold her soul to like, what is a friend god? Yeah. Dionysus? She's just so <laughs> lovable and likable. It is quite amazing. So I only make jokes about the farts and jars that exist in her house. Because I am jealous of the things that she has that I will never be able to dream to achieve. Mm -hmm. I'm just jealous of your sweet smell. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> what the? That, that was you. How, how, how am I supposed to follow that? That was an all out monologue. That was amazing watching the, how, like. Yeah wordless speechless you are oh that's incredible and you all are that was but we all feel the same way too a, which is the incredible part that was a lot that was very nice thank you Corey. you made me feel bad about being angry i know right <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because I meant every fucking word of it, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> so evil, <laughs> it's so hard to be mean whenever the dude is genuine. <laughs> Eat shit. Eat shit. <laughs> How is this? Like Aaron, this is why he was spanked as a child. Yeah. <laughs> now you see why she had to spank me with the two by four. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, my <laughs> lord. Um, okay, I've got to come back from that. I've got to come back from that. <laughs> Danny, so you know, I, 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 ha I, 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 uh, I am so impressed by your resilience. <laughs> With your patience and your ability to, like, survive on a daily basis in, in a house with that one you're doing the god like the lord's work um you had to make one custom uh <laughs> danny 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 sweet sweet danny you've been danny sweet danny <laughs> you're ruining my moment i understand i can't make it as like Sorry. good as yours you unlocked a boring but... memory for me i'll shut up i'll shut up you know i'll turn my mic off too no, don't do that. No, we'll miss I'm, I'm going to, so you can talk, you can talk, you can talk. Um, Danny, you are a delightful, delightful human being to be around um, on a general basis. I have told you how much I enjoyed, like, staying in the same room with you. Because <laughs> living, living with you this weekend has been such an eye-opener. And the fact that, like, you, you say that we're similar... 
I think we're very similar as well. Are you trying to steal <laughs> we have Danny right now? Over so many things. <laughs> Someone's got to. Okay. Yes, I'm. I'm trying to do that exactly. She's right trying now. so hard. Got yes. You. Okay. Um. Um. Who Who would have thunk uh, that we'd be here now? Not me. Not me. Mm. Not me. I knew. Um, I. I mean, I'm the one who who asked you to join the team. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, that's true. That is true. <laughs> that was. That is true. Um. I voted against it. Yes. <laughs> yes, I'm sure. I know you did. Yeah. Uh, cause I was a threat to you, right? You were, yeah. I can steal your spot. You're like too. almost the same height as me. I know. Yeah. It's two just, gingers. I, I mean, I. Oh. I used to have ginger hair in my beard. It went white though. Really? Yeah. Know. All the white hairs were ginger and, and blondes. Yeah. But Danny. Oh, that's right. Wow. Um, this is so hard. I'm, I'm you so... You came up with it. Well, I know. It's just because I'm like, try. I want it to be as good as Corey's, but it's it very won't be. difficult. No, it's different. Um, yes. Uh, I, we had a rehearsal earlier today where, um, we had to like imitate each other or like take mm. on something yeah. that someone else could do. And half of us imitated and Danny. And half of us <laughs> imitated <laughs> Danny. Yeah. Um, like I think over half imitated Danny. Um, I don't know why. <laughs> well, it's it's a testament to her. Yeah. You are so thoroughly unique in your comedy, and it's something that is so unattainable for everyone else that, like, we just... It, it's, it's one of those things where everyone tried to do you, but they couldn't do you. It's impossible to do you. Yeah. I could. <laughs> but... Corey, you do me all the time. I... Shh. I will... I... Another, news. another sidebar, though, like when Corey said that he was stepping down as leader for our group and that you were taking that role, mm -hmm. like nobody on the team was like freaked out. We're like, oh, no, we trust Danny like implicitly mm -hmm. and that she will not only do well in this role, but she will thrive and bring take one into a new like era. Well, I so, appreciate that. Yeah. I was a little scared, but I was I'm also sure. like, I'm doing the work, so I might as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it kind of was. Yeah. Oh, you're so sweet. No, Aaron. you are. You are wonderful and so incredibly talented, and and it's it's a pleasure to know you and be your friend. Yeah. Also, yeah. talking about earlier in rehearsal, Danny said nice things about me in the rehearsal, so I get a double dose of Danny. Oh, yeah, compliments. I did. So just say the same thing you said before. And no, it's... no, I'm gonna say different things. Oh, good. I had more things. I'm so good at taking compliments. Um, I want I think, you to make this look as painful as possible. Okay. I think for me, like, there's so many amazing things about you, Christian. But one of the things I love about you is that you, you were saying to Aaron, like, she makes friends. But I feel like you make, like, really deep connections with people. Like, um, so many con goers come up to, to me. They come up to Corey. And they like us. But they love you, Christian. I don't know. I don't know what it is that you do, but you make them feel at, at ease, you make them feel at home, and you are entertaining to them. And I just, that's just something so beautiful. And to have someone who always makes our audience members feel welcome, wanted, um, to feel included is just, like, I couldn't, I couldn't train someone to do that. I, I can train them to do good improv. I can train them to be friendlier at the booth, you know, like pass out the flyers and promote our show. But I can't train them to make the audience feel um, cared for and appreciated and like that's something that's uniquely you thank you and i just i love that about you and i know like earlier you were saying that you know sometimes it's some of your insecurities and i was like oh my god like those things that you're insecure about like that's not how i it's not coming off that way to me and it's mm. not coming that off that way to any of like the the condors i've ever met or the other people i've interacted with you you're the friendliest guy on stage yeah like literally you <clears throat> come off as relatable to entire crowds of people yeah that's i mean that one that one person wouldn't want to would not have wanted to take a photo with you that we hope is is deleted from the internet yeah i forgot <laughs> about that yeah i just and i i love that you're just such a nice person you're like yep i'm gonna take this photo right now yeah <laughs> but that just again it goes like you make people feel so comfortable with you and like they love you and there's there's so many amazing things about your performance wise but I really feel like 
your, your biggest strength, strength not, not only in improv and in your friendships, but even in acting, is like that you make other people feel really good. Mm-hmm. And guess what? They want to hire you when you make you you feel good. Uh, That's a great thing. So normally I don't reveal this information, but you are uh, <laughs> you you're now an ace on the team. By the way, I knew dance. That's awesome. <laughs> like, your 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 rank in the hierarchy is ace. So another twenty twenty three accomplishment is I turned ace. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Oh, Tell cool. your fiance. She you. might need to know. Yeah, she she. she like, no one oh, else okay. gets to know where they sit, but oh, you, you awesome. now do. Well, well uh, genuinely, one of my favorite moments from this year. Uh, so when we were doing the auditions to bring on new members of Take oh, One, yeah. we uh, it's like right before. Oh, uh, it was right before the closed, like the invite only mm-hmm. uh, uh, audition. Corey took. Me and uh, you know another member aside and said, "Hey, uh, I think that like you guys are doing well. You're, you're you're doing good improv, but there's a bit of a gap between you and the best on the team. So we're gonna have extra rehearsals." And my pride took a bit of a blow. You know, like I want to be good. I want to be better than I am. I always feel that way. But I mean, I did it. You know, I I, I showed up to all of the the extra rehearsals, and then at Acom this year. Corey told me I didn't need them anymore, and it—I don't know—it made me feel really good. You so. really improved from those extra rehearsals, like yeah. Of, I mean, not just the extra rehearsals, right. but like just your whole improv journey, like so much improvement. I mean, if we if we had awards in Take One, you would be the most improved. Like that would you would get the most improved award. I I mean I I think that Corey feels the same way too from the beginning of the year. I wish I could tell you the metrics, like where you started and where you are now, and when those gaps happened. Uh, cause I, that's just something that's normally in the, in the way we run the team. It's like, that's just for me. I'm the one that keeps yeah. track all that. I wish I could tell you, just know that in fifth, 17 years, 17 years, oh shit, 17 years, no one's gapped that fast. Yeah. That's the fastest gap in history. I hate you guys. <laughs> that's so nice. Thank you. On the entire roster, that is the fastest gap in history. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that only was preceded uh, by Danny's Gavin. Yeah. Danny was, and the the amount of time. I tried. I tried. I really did. <laughs> I the amount of time lot. between how long it took you and how long it took Danny is is kind of wild. Because Danny was like over the course of a couple of years. I think. Yeah. I think. And I think yours it was in the years. course of yours was in the course of less than six months. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is. A wild, uh, it's a wild span. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, truly. Because even I, like, just revealing a little bit, because I'm uncomfortable revealing this, I, I was on B scale for a while. Like, I, I actually got downgraded. I downgraded myself. So I was like, fuck, I'm fucking this up right now. So. He, he re-upgraded himself, though. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He re-upped the subscription. Yeah. Wow. Thanks, so I put in some effort and less time teaching. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm, I will, I will shout out both Christian and Danny and the fact that like Christian, um, seeing you just like skyrocket and grow yeah. has been an absolute pleasure. Um, 110% and you are someone that I look to and the fact that like, I can, I can grow like him. That's how I hope to grow. Um, and Danny you, I, I just see you doing so many things mm-hmm. for this team in so many ways of you taking over hosting and just taking like, like taking this team on your shoulders and, and, and becoming an even better leader than you already are. And it's just, it's very cool. It's very cool to see. Um, yeah, just because it's like, ee, it's so exciting. It's so exciting, and I'm so proud of everyone. And then Corey, of course, 
You, you, I appreciate you to the moon and back because you have been very much like a mentor, mm. even though I am both. the worst mentor to have. <laughs> well, look, so, like a big brother mentor. Big brother mentor. Big brother I don't meet mentor. you with what you want. I meet you with barely what you need. <laughs> <laughs> well, that segues nicely oh my gosh. into uh, me talking about Corey. So. And I've told Corey and Danny this before, but I join. I, I chose Stomping Ground as my place to learn improv because of them. Uh, it was very practical at first because they were doing the thing I wanted to do. So of course I want to learn from them. And oh gosh, I since moving to Texas, I've been here for like 12, 13, 12 years now. I didn't really make any friends until Take One. Uh, which was a good, you know, nine, ten years into my journey here. Mm -hmm. And, like, like, like Aaron said, like, for me, Corey is a mentor. And, and Danny, too. Like, everybody on Take One's a mentor for me. But I, I've never had a mentor before. Like, no one's ever paid special attention to me. And I feel feel supported and very much like I'm being mentored by Corey years and years and years of experience and he's told me before he doesn't really like mentoring and there I know that <laughs> this, this is gonna sound like an insult it's not I hope it is. It's I hope not. it hurts my feelings. It, it, I, I hope not. I mean, this is something you know. Like, people's opinions of Corey can be very polarizing. Mm -hmm. People either hate Corey or love Corey. And he's like mushrooms. He's like mushrooms. <laughs> I am definitely like shrooms. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a trip and very rarely is it the one you want to go on. <laughs> <laughs> there are three types of Corey. The one that is absolutely delicious, the one that will trip your ass out in either a good way or a bad way, and then the version that will kill you. The kill you version. <laughs> oh, that is the most apt description. I fucking hate mushrooms, but I'm a mushroom. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, no, I, no, it's okay. I just, I consider myself very lucky to be Corey's friend. And not just a colleague or a, a mentee or uh, a rival or whatever. I, I consider myself lucky to be his friend. Because I know as a person who has had trauma and issues with people betraying and all these things, it's so hard to make genuine friends. And so I consider myself lucky to be lit in. And to support me, not only as a, an actor, an improviser, and to help me, like, introducing me to people and networking, all these things, which Corey has done, unselfishly, but to support me as a person and as a friend. And I can count on one hand how many people I, in my, throughout my whole life, that have cared about me like that personally. And so just mad love and respect. Aww. Kiss! For, <laughs> <laughs> for all the jokes aside, I think this is a great way to end the stream. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cause, uh, and if you don't mind, I would love to do it this time. Yes, please. This is a great thing. And normally I would joke my way out of this, but... In all honesty, there is so much bullshit in the world. There's so much bullshit that we put up. There's so much bullshit that we get fed. And there's so much bullshit just in and out. And we never, we very rarely take the moment to look each other in the eye with the people that we've connected with, the people that we love, and the people that have touched our lives, whether good or ill. And in this way, I'm very blessed to have a bunch of people that have touched my life in an amazing way. To look them in the eyes and tell them the most amazing things about them. Yeah, I have given a lot of hell, but I should make more of an effort to look them in the eyes and tell them the amazing things they are. So 
if you leave this episode with anything, if you're listening to this and we've cut out a massive section out of the middle end <laughs> that you're wondering what happened, I want you to, I, I personally, I personally want you to go out into the world and to find somebody who means something to you and say something from the bottom of your heart. Don't say something filler. Don't say how like, a great person. No, really put some care, put some effort into saying something very specific to them of something that, that means a lot to them. Because too much, too often to not, and I know that we don't hear directly anymore. We don't sit there and insult each other. No, I'm not saying that. But we also don't do the other side of it. Say something nice. Say something genuine. Say something specific about someone that is in your life. Just go out of your way, find them, and tell them. Give them a good solid five minutes of your time to tell them how amazing they are. Because it really could mean the difference. Because Christian saying that to me right now was exactly the thing I needed to hear at this moment. So thank you guys. Have a wonderful holiday. We love all of you. Thank you so much for all your support and love through 2023. We are Take One Improv, and we will continue to keep doing what we do because we love all of you. Bye, Thank everybody. you all, Bye. and see you in 2024. See you.